All right, so if you're watching this live, it's all right. We are just going to jump right back into part number two. This is the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. If you are listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon, or checking us out on the Bama Central YouTube channel and interested in part number one, you can uh, hear that on the same platforms I just mentioned. We've been talking about Alabama and Oklahoma. We're hanging out in the Derek Daniel State Farm Studios right off McFarland Boulevard. Call 205-758-3391 for all your insurance needs. And we've been talking about the Alabama offense for the last hour and change. It's time to flip the football with our friend Mason mm-hmm. Woods. Call uh, Find Mason Woods at MA Woods underscore on the Twitter machine. I am at Joe Gaither 6 on all the social media machines. We appreciate your comments, questions, queries, and complaints. Mason Woods. The Alabama defense just cannot stop quarterback run no, to save their no, life. No, they cannot. They, they, they cannot do that. But, man, I, I'm really not too upset with this defense uh, compared to the offense. At the end of the day, defense still puts you in a position to win. They only gave up 10 points. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was right there for, you know, obviously uh, we talked about Jackson Arnold. He threw for less than 75 yards. <laughs> <Yes>. Like <laughs> he rushed for 130, 130, something like that. I think uh, Xavier Robinson, yeah, yeah. Xavier Robinson had 107 yards, two touchdowns, like Xavier Robinson, Dylan Sampson, handshake meme. Like, uh, you know, uh, they just took what those two teams did, what Vandy and Tennessee did and said, yep, we'll do the same. Thank you. Which is disappointing. But at the end of the day, the Bama defense still kind of did what we've seen it do most of the year. They bent, but they did not break. Offense just couldn't keep keep up their end of the bargain. Uh, the Deontay Lawson injury is crushing. I think that is kind of where you really point to things starting to go really bad for Alabama in this game. Uh, you know, you lose your green dot guy, you lose your play caller out there. It seemed like after that point, a lot of confusion was maybe out on the field at some points. But I still, yeah. 10 points. The defense still only gave up 10 points in this game. So, I don't know. Well, you, you, you're you right at the issue right there. Because you'll go into the game without Hugh Robinson, and obviously Keanu Koo is mm-hmm. off the team. So your your Wolf position is Quay Rousseau and Yanzi Pierre. Well, what do we see in warm-ups? We see Jamarian Latham has moved from Bandit to Wolf. You're starting Bandit. Inexplicably. You're starting bandit. You've made your starting bandit. You've now made your one A, your one B wolf, Mm -hmm. right? With Quay Russo. Uh, Okay. okay. And now he's in the mixture with that wolf position, Mm -hmm. one one B with Jihad Campbell. So it's really Jihad Campbell, Quay Russo, and Jamarian Latham playing wolf kind of in the trio. Uh, And what becomes of Deontay Lawson's injury, which, oh my gosh, now it's going to be he's out for the rest of the year. Obviously, it's only one one more week in, in the bowl game, so that basically it's a two-month injury or maybe longer once we find out what it is. Uh, and that's unfortunate. But what mm-hmm. happens, he goes off the field. Jo- Justin Jefferson goes from backup inside linebacker slash I'm, I'm here when you need to bump Jahad Campbell over, mm-hmm. right, um, to I'm starter. And now I'm a, I'm a starter, but I'm also the green dot guy. And they said yesterday that he's done well with it. Is what you know mm-hmm. is what is what came home. I said, but it, it, you're getting the, you're either getting the calls in late or he is communicating them late. That is happening quite frequently. Yeah. One or the other. One or the other. But uh, either it's his fault I or the or, or maybe fault. that potentially the new player you threw in there without any experience was the problem. But uh, say you know say what you will. Sure, it's one or the other. And then, so he's out there, and now Jihad Campbell is not able to be playing Wolf as much. He's basically locked in at at, a strong side inside linebacker uh, or or Stinger, right? One one or the other. And so you've lost your flexibility. You've lost your, uh, your signal caller, and all your depth is on display. I tend to agree with you, Mason, that the defense didn't really play horribly now yeah. i don't think they get an a no i think his uh, is a c plus yeah about a b minus c yeah. plus you get the turnover in the red zone uh on big. the edge of the red Could zone on like their first or second drive it was, yeah. on their drive it was a second drive second drive say. second drive on the alabama 21 so you're right here on, on on the 21 now third drive they march right back down in there and they got your butt Sure did. Oh, Bray Hubbard. They they've been watching 18 fly up from the secondary. Look, this is the first bad play he's made all year. 
and it just just so happened to come right here. Yeah, they hit the quick slant across the middle. Bray Hubbard tries to come blow it up and just whiffs. No, that's all I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. What I'm talking about is the third drive. We're on the 20, 25. Uh, it's third and third and long, and it's wide receiver screen double pass. Oh, oh, it, oh! It's yeah. wide receiver screen. Demonte yeah. Jackson, Bray Hubbard come to yeah. converge. Second receiver goes right past D- D- Bray Hubbard and whoop, double yeah. pass right in his hands. Should have been a touchdown for yes. Oklahoma. Got very lucky and ended up as a missed field goal. Yeah, you get saved. I mean, basically there by the football gods, they they step in and intervene. So really, really difficult. Uh, I, I think the defense played fine. Yeah, in certain uh, circumstances, didn't. But like the QB rushing is bad. But at the end of the day, you it's they still didn't really let it beat them. You only gave up ten points. That is still in today's college football. Giving up ten points is very impressive. That's a hard thing to do. Offense could not really keep up there into the bargain. Well, Offense. you gave up seventeen. Uh, I mean, you get the ball at the 14. I'm not really going to blame the defense for giving up a touchdown there. But it's just more... Like, sure, though. It's just more physicality. Like, yeah. A lack of physicality. Yeah. Right? It's just a lack of physicality uh, that plagues you right there on the 14, that plagues sure. you on the very last drive of the first half, as they're just, uh, what's this drive here? Uh, it's 12 plays, 67 yards, five minutes and change. The drive before there was a there was a field goal, eleven plays, 51, mm-hmm. 51 yards. So like you were just Vanderbilt, we're gonna rip this pay drive out your playbook. Yeah, oh, we'll take over two hundred rushing yards in the first half. Yeah, we'll take that shovel pass that you used, and we'll use it about four or five times. Uh, it just while on the whole is fine. The under the hood mm-hmm. shows more, and, and, and I think it's. I mean, the easiest explanation I think is personnel. Is, yeah, it's, is, an, is I think losing loss and that has a lot. To losing do loss that. and losing Robinson. And doing all this shifting around, putting players where they're not necessarily used to playing. I think that is uh, it spells disaster for any team, uh, really. I mean, Oklahoma obviously was able to maybe overcome it a bit, but they've they've had these injuries all seasons. So they've kind of figured out how to deal with them. Alabama, you come into this game thinking you're going to have a guy, and then he goes out. You know, you're set you're set up in a bad way from the start. Really, really tragic defensively. Uh, I, I, I think, and just, just the. I just think the overall effort was just not really. Yeah, it just didn't really seem like anybody. It, it did not seem like any Alabama player on that field had any inkling of the gravity of this game, what this game could mean for the rest of the season. You know what they had in front of them. It was just, it was just seemed like all right, let us going up here to a trip to Norman. Right, I don't know. There was no sense of urgency of it anything. It seemed like. At least for the second time this year, because it looked like the same sort of effort against Vanderbilt. That oh, we're in Alabama. You're just going to fall all over for us. Yeah, and it's such a mind-boggling. I don't know how you don't get your team up to play Oklahoma. It's right. Oklahoma. Like no matter what their record is. Yeah, I don't understand it. I, I why were we not sitting in the facility watching Brian? You know Brian and the Boz on ESPN thirty for thirty. Just you, know, you can hype Adrian these guys Peterson, up. Like, you know why are we not watching? You know why I don't? How do you not get your guys up to play Oklahoma? Because yeah, regardless of the record, Jason, why, you beat Oklahoma. Hypo, just put on some hypo highlights. I mean anybody? Shoot, you go into the Palace in the Plains, and it was it was full. The stadium was it was was I mean, it felt like big time football, like. That's what I don't understand. Very it weird. wasn't a Vanderbilt atmosphere yeah. where you're like, oh, you know, we're here. It play. wasn't 11 a.m. on a Saturday, you know. <laughs> it sure, it sure seemed like it. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like we've been saying it the whole show. Still, I'm just, I have so many questions that I will not and probably never will. You know, I do not and probably never will get answers for. All right, before we go into the uh, the polls and kind of where Alabama is going to land, is there anything else that we're missing here from the offense or defense or the game perspective that you are uh, thinking that we need to uh, discuss here? I mean, you know, uh, I was hoping Damani would have a big game. He didn't. That's about it, you know. Uh, yeah, I think C plus. That's that's about the best I can give this defense because, like you said, they they didn't or you know they didn't play too horribly that's overall. Still a good game. Yeah, that's still a good grade. For yeah, me. I would have given them lower. Yeah, 
I, I'd probably about give him a C. C plus. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, you know, I still think the offense really did not help you out in many of the. No, games. not at all. <laughs> I mean, threw you out there on the 14 yard line. That's, I just, I, I can't really blame the defense for some of that. You ended up but getting yeah. a stop. Uh, you ended up getting a stop. Uh, you get credit for the turnover. You get credit for the stop, forcing the field goal. Like after that, for, after that play, uh, after that drive, that 14 yard drive, you went punt, punt, end of half. Yeah. So you know, uh, given Oklahoma did just kind of play the clock management game at that Certainly. point, so they that were totally plays into it on. also. But yeah. I, I, but this end of even this end of half drive, like come on, ten like I know it's a three score game, ten plays, thirty four yards, six fifty three. They yeah. they they sucked the last seven minutes out of that game. They just said, I, which of course you're up three scores, but like you can't give the offense one more possession. Like, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, uh, I mean, disappointing in the defense. Not nearly as disappointed as I am in the offense. That's sure, what I'll say. Sure, sure. It's a C for the defense, and it's an F minus. Yeah, it's a you're not even you're getting like sent back a grade or something with the offense. You're getting sent back to kindergarten Ooh. here. Horrific. We're kicking you out of school. Let me tell you about our friends, Purple Total Roofing. They're the most reliable residential roof replacement company in Alabama or Mississippi. Purple Total Roofing is the leading expert in local residential roofing solutions, specializing in providing unparalleled service and quality craftsmanship for all your roof replacement needs. Call Dustin Foley and his team today at 877-PT-ROOF-5 for your free roof inspection. That's 877-787-6635 to schedule your appointment. And one of their qualified employees to come check out your roof for free and make sure you're prepared for any and all of life's storms. Check them out online today at RoofTurtle.com. I guess my biggest defensive issue just before we, it's mostly with the coaching, I think. It's not really, you know, not the players. I thought a lot of the players on defense were giving effort and they were put up, they were put in bad positions and not put in positions where they could execute well. My whole issue the whole weekend is with the coaches. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, offensively too, the same thing, but even then, you know, there were some moments where some guys on that offense maybe didn't do things uh, that they were supposed to do. I don't know. Man. This is a, the execution issue and, and just the lack of being up for the game is, Mind numbing. I, I cannot wrap my head around it. Right. It, it really makes me question the, the, the staff as a whole. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to do that. I think they're smart people. Mm -hmm. um, but it, just everything from Saturday makes me wonder what the heck have I been seeing for the last 10, 11 weeks? Uh, have I ha, have what I, have what I've been seeing? Has it been real? Mm -hmm. Or are some of the some of these wins just not worth a darn? Yeah. Uh... I'm I'm right there with you. Um, you know, I, I don't want to play the game of, you know, oh, fire DeBoer. This no. isn't the Alabama way. The, Nick Saban would have never stood for three losses. But here you go. But, you know, uh, he, 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 he in the back of my head a little bit. Well, it, how could it not be? Because here's the deal. Go into the year thinking transition, want to compete for the playoffs. Probably should be in the playoffs. I maybe mean, this, as an at-large. Look, twelve-team playoff gets announced. Uh, every Alabama fan and their mother. I oh, will never miss that. Right. Okay, so you're looking like you missed it, which is not the end of the world. But here's the problem. This weekend, when Auburn comes to town and and needs a win to get to bowl eligibility, mm -hmm. and your roster, your Alabama roster. Has and I don't have a problem with this, but sometimes this I think this weekend it becomes an issue. If your roster has California, New York, has Chicago, has Illinois, has Florida, has Texas, has Arizona, you know, has not Alabama play is not the core of the Alabama roster is not made up of in state players. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest, it's just not. Uh, of course, you have Malachi and Deontay Lawson. You have Tim Keenan, big time. You know guys from in in yeah. state. Uh, you know Clay Russo, James Smith, in state guys. You know, um, but the core of your roster, a lot of your roster, is not from the state. A lot of the Alabama Auburn roster, like they, they would love nothing more than to beat you this I coming. Mean, you saw what uh, I'm blanking on his name now. You saw what that Auburn linebacker said uh, to Marcus Riddick. You fool! <laughs> yeah. You fool! You fool! 
thank you for that. But all right. But that's how all, that's how they feel about this. The I don't think there's as many players on Alabama's team that feel that way. The overarching point is, if you lose this weekend, like I will still not be in the fire to board no, camp. But I, 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 I won't be there. The, 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 the season's been fine, been good enough, uh, considering all the transition. But it will get it'll get loud because there's no like you walked into the year thinking, oh, look, we did this. 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes mm-hmm. ago, if you told us six months ago you lost at Oklahoma, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You said, oh, that's a big-time program. Yeah. That's a hard place to play. That, that, But six months ago, if you said you're losing Auburn at home with this roster, you'd be angry. Mm-hmm. And that still is the case today because Auburn's team is bad. Auburn's team has been bad all year. Yep. Yes, they got the win, but look, it's a huge weekend. It's a huge weekend, and I'm wondering, can, does this Alabama coaching staff have the ability to get mm-hmm. the players up ready for a huge weekend? Because we just had a huge weekend. Well, it should have been a huge weekend. Yep. And it was a total dud. A total dud. A, a, a complete and total organiz- organizational failure. And look, the sun still came up. Everything's fine. The money's still flowing in. Everybody's going to mm-hmm. be at the Iron Bowl. Look, Kalen DeBoer, the recruiting's still high. Everything's fine. Uh, the, the, the program's not burning. Well, I'm not. I'm not there. Yeah. But it was an absolute organizational failure this past weekend, and that failure spins me forward and leaves me with a lot of doubt this weekend. A lot of doubt. It's the Iron Bowl. Hugh Freeze would love nothing more than to come in here and just nya 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 boo boo. We got bowl eligible, mm. and now you have to sit with this for 12 months. And your season, your first year. Se- Look, the first year has been pretty good first year. But if you leave your first year ending on a mm. uh, ending on a loss to Auburn and then you go off to, you know, whatever, Citrus lose Bowl, game. who cares? Bowl you lose game. the Auburn game, you're losing the bowl game too. Well, yeah. Who, uh, how many opt-outs are you having? Exactly. I mean, yeah, you're not winning that bowl game. It's a huge weekend. And I have a massive concern about the organizational ability the, the ability of getting them to recognize that it's a big weekend. And, and, and that, you know, of course, you can get to, what is it, nine and three. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get to the, the Capital One Bowl. Great. You can get to the Citrus Bowl. But more importantly, you can ensure that Those the order the of, the, <laughs> right, the order of the hierarchy stays the same. Because uh, right now, there's no respect for that Alabama no. name right now. Oh, Vanderbilt, nobody respects the board. Vanderbilt beat you. Oklahoma beat you. Uh, one one win in the conference. Oklahoma beat you. You went to Vanderbilt and lost in front of nineteen thousand people, and eighteen thousand of them were cheering for you. Here's the deal. This Alabama team. If I'm coaching against them, if I'm a Division three school, all I'm telling my team is, "Hey, man, we're gonna run the ball for." Two yards a pop, three and a half yards a pop, and we're just going to suck the life out of it. And all I need you to do is move them off the ball just a mm-hmm. little bit. Oh, I got, oh, yeah. You literally just have to commit to the pain cave. And this weekend, what did Jarquez Hunter have last? 28 carries last yeah, week, something like so. that. 28 carries, three Something's. touchdowns. This coming weekend, all Hugh Freeze has to tell his team is you see the oh, pain cave, man. boys? The key to the victory is in the deep end of the pain cave. Alabama has shown. Through three road games, you punch them in the mouth, you drag them into deep water, you take them into the pain cave. They don't like it. They don't like it at all. And that recipe is replicable by anyone. Mm-hmm. Anyone. It doesn't take anything special to to, to replicate it. Yeah. It takes not like. Is Jackson a, a, a talented player? Yes. He's got a good little set of wheels on him. Mm-hmm. He made a couple passes. Sure. But that. You know, I mean, you look at Vanderbilt. Xavier Robinson, is, is, was he a talented runner? Yeah, he ran hard. He, but didn't mm-hmm. he bust anything big? No. The big run he had down the, down the right-hand side in the first uh, first or second quarter uh, that put him into to good position, hole was wide open. Like, it's yeah. just, will you commit to the pain cave? Can, how deep can you go? And so it makes me really, really, really concerned about uh, the soul of this team, and Absolutely. when you look forward to this week, uh, you know, because that's all you can do. Like, you, 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 we're already on Tuesday, we're giving you this show late. We need to move on to we need to move into the Iron Bowl. It's going to be a weird week with Thanksgiving. We hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Like, 
it just is highly concerning to say it takes no talent to beat Alabama. Mm -hmm. It takes no talent. It just takes grit and will. Um, grit, will, and a decent game plan. Because it's 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 been the opposite of that for the last 15, you know, 15 years. Alabama was the team where you had to beat them with an expert game plan. You had to beat them with a, an elite talent at quarterback, an elite talent at running back. It is not that case no longer. And that's highly concerning for the staff going forward. And, and look, I'm not in, I'm not in a place where get rid of everybody, but you know you do have to maybe shuffle some things around this off season though. A little bit, a little bit. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be a very interesting off season. Look, anytime a coach can transition happens, that first year is going to be weird. Mm -hmm. You're going to get guys in. You're going to get guys out from a player standpoint and a coaching standpoint. Coach DeBoer is going to keep some players, some pe some yeah. players and coaches that maybe he's not going to keep in the future. Like it's just there will be more turnover in the offseason. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it handles or how it happens, but um, we'll be here to cover it all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. You know, I went from two weeks ago zero shot at Auburn beats Alabama zero shot mm -hmm. to being awoken to the fact that. That, that Vanderbilt game is maybe not maybe not as fluky as yep. as it seems. And Oklahoma, with more talent than Vanderbilt, said, "We just gonna commit to the pain cave and go 11 plays, 51 yards, and we'll take our field goal. We'll go 12 plays, 67 yards. We'll take our touchdown. Oh, we'll take advantage of this offensive mistake, punch it in from 14 yards, and now your mistakes have magnified, mm -hmm. and you're in a world like it's just." A really, really, really not a good starting weekend. Mm -hmm. Not a fun spot to be in. And not as a fan, not as a person that covers this team, probably not as a person on this team. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, lots of questions, and we will be here to cover it all. We need to get out of here for the day. Look, we want to leave you with this Alabama playing in the Players Era Festival tonight against Houston. Didn't really get into it that much because we've been, been a lot, a lot of this uh, football discussion. And there will be more football discussion tomorrow. But tomorrow, we will also be talking about Alabama and Houston. The Players Era Festival in Las Vegas. Big weekend for the basketball program. UConn lost uh, yesterday. Dan Hurley went scorched earth. Oh, gosh. He used a lot of foul language. Uh, and so we will uh, talk about Alabama, Alabama's performance against Houston tomorrow. We will talk about this Iron Bowl tomorrow. More concerns about the Alabama football team. We are going to the Malmore facility to talk to some players and we'll see what they have to say about uh this past weekend and mm -hmm. this coming weekend against auburn thanks to everybody for watching the program on the bama central youtube channel on my own social media machines at joe gay through six thank you so much to purple total roofing the druid city music hall and to state Derek daniel at state farm for sponsoring the program follow mason woods at ma woods underscore and we will get out of here for the day talking to you again tomorrow on the joe gay through show on bama central and bama central.com Thanks for joining us on today's edition of The Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central. Keep up with Joe on all his social media pages at Joe Gaither 6. Subscribe, rate, and review the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and be sure to read us daily at BamaCentral.com. <laughs>